Hello everyone, so this is Yerma, so back with me for this is advanced listening from the audio 1 till audio 3 so this is for the mid text and let's start it from the audio 1 part 1 from audio 1 Cities, uh, so it's to retell about the cities are a place where public art can be distinguished from museum and gallery space we can see by walking around to find public art. MRT is her favorite hiding place. Every time we get off a new station, there is a new place that we feel. There are different material used maybe from salt and permanent, so they can withstand rainy weather outside. To besides space, pick it which is either relevant to the space. So if you look at a space that has a view, then maybe you see something new and different for fun that you've never seen before. You will envy a few of sculptures, mural paintings, or general public art if you watch downtown. On a heritage site, it's Kampung Jayam, Little India or Chinatown. Fernando Butero is a giant bird sitting on the edge of the Singapore River. It is an interesting quote that has a different reaction for each person. Some were there to comment outside, follow and what it was quite majestic and heavy as it was bigger than the rest of us. The blood on the bus, the banks of separate rivers makes everyone curious. From officiously busy and characteristics how we, we see constantly. Okay next, the statue is the work of Fasolo who is one of Singapore's pioneering sculptors. The statue has a meaning of face of Ras Perferi made in 2008, featuring five boys, one whom jumped to a river, so it's reminders of one who often saw children jumping and playing water along the river, and it took us to a different time in Singapore, where I've read the souls many people in a different way. What she likes about the work is that we can see every detail in the children's room, so that it makes us feel closer. We can see happiness and joy children when they jump and play in the river. It is the sturdiest sculpture along the way when you try to look around. Next, part 2 from audio 2. So, this part is totally retail from the uh, retail us about every opportunity is an open door. So, we must really recognize the opportunity. All are not fixed opportunities, so we must know how to recognize opportunities. For example, when she started her career in America at age 32, she felt that her previous uh, life should be forgotten and start over from scratch. She joined film at the age of 19 and she had to do things quickly because yourself's life usually just like that from 10 to 12 years if you are lucky. She didn't do film five times in one year. She did everything she could and then she realized that she was done one taking her own time and deciding what she wanted to be. So, when she doesn't want to make her five films in a year, but she will make quality films. She started while doing fashion. She chose film to push herself to become an actor. She becomes an actor according to what she can and she wants to be what an audience wants to see her what the industry wants. We can also experience change in thinking daily life. And next, this what makes us must be able to find our main goal. If we can unfold the problem in stock, and so if you are doing long activities, you need to pay attention to yourself, because no one knows what will happen. So what, what to learn in life? Find on your out your potentials, and can apply it when in a new place. For example. She has produced a film together, and that's what she got from when she did six films that she did it with the best and trusted people. But from that, also want to learn more. She been in the business for 20 years, and that doesn't mean that she isn't learning anymore, because there is still a lot that doesn't know. It is an important evolution when it comes to business. She learned a lot from ventures, capitalist managers. She asked a lot of important things with him, but it was not enough. But sometimes people are afraid to ask questions because they feel certain they know it instead of making a mistake. It's better to ask first than the app making a mistake and looking stupid. 
so we are next for the audio tree part three the audio tree part three is retell about five keys to successful negotiations according to harvard law school there are five important things you need to know to prepare for negotiations and first thing about what will be good outcome what will be the best form and outcome why an acceptable result wait needs and interested and make a list of what uh, to have and what to do and what is best unacceptable and the second identify your b-a-t-n-a -A. you don't sign in the negotiation still to make things better a list of alternative goals for no deal negotiation is made which is might happen if you don't make a deal and choose the best better arrangements with supplier customer uh, or partner what obstacle make things worse and turns what they how to carry to make in increase your stakes okay and next the third set the reparations price ratio wax away price determine the price of your reservations there are many search that can be used and next fourth you must identify the level of auditory who do you plan to negotiate with and next fifth assessing the position and interest to know to other parties is very important what is known about the objects, side, their goals, their needy, and their life is this important and their psychographics and what is reparations and the price what they held in the lab and it's most interesting we must examine and investigate the point of the carefully by day so that important things to achieve positive things so if you send them an email they will send your negotiations because they are deal with you. So workshops which will help track the outcome of every step of negotiation. So we are we are done about the all the part of the audio that I have been telling you. So I hopefully I I make it right and get so far away from the mistakes. So next video, see you guys. Bye.